looking at determining the limiting reagent. So question one, if you have 4.8 grams of magnesium ribbon reacting in a solution of dilute hydrochloric acid containing 7.3 grams of hydrochloric acid, which reactant is the limiting reagent? And what you're trying to find out, out here is which reactant isn't in excess, is the one stopping how much product can actually be made. And in order to do these questions, you must have a balanced symbol equation. So let's work out our balanced symbol equation first of all. I'm going to do this question first as the word equation and then as the balanced symbol. So we've got a simple neutralization reaction. So what's produced when magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid? Well, it's magnesium chloride. And then the byproduct will be hydrogen. Convert it to a balanced symbol equation now. So using your periodic table, magnesium is Mg. Hydrochloric acid, hopefully you know by this stage that it's HCl. Magnesium chloride, if I show you on the left hand side the ions, Mg2 plus Cl minus, then we can see that the formula of magnesium chloride would be MgCl2. And this is something you should have done at GCSE and IGCSE. And lastly, hydrogen is diatomic, which is why I'm, I'm writing H2. Let's balance it now. So we've got two chlorines on the right hand side, only one on the right. So I'm going to put a two here. And now just double check. Yeah, everything else is balanced. So if you watch my videos at GCSE, IGCSE level, you'll know that I like using table formats when we're solving mole calculations. So I'm going to do that now. And in my table, I'm going to have these headings. So mass, MR, and number of moles. Now we're trying to determine which of the two reactants is the limiting reagent. So we're going to start by writing down the information we know from the question. So we know we've got 4.8 grams of magnesium and we know that we have 7.3 grams of hydrochloric acid. And once you've entered the masses into the periodic table, you can now enter the MRs, which you get from the periodic table. So magnesium has a mass of 24.305. Hydrochloric acid is going to be hydrogen, which is 1, plus chlorine, which is 35.45 which gives you a total of 36.45. Then we want to work out the number of moles, and up here I've written out the formula triangle, which you should be aware of already, and that shows you that number of moles is given by mass divided by MR. So let's do that for magnesium now. It doesn't matter if you do it for hydrochloric acid first or magnesium, just pick one, work it out. So you do 4.8 divided by 24.305 to get the number of moles of magnesium, which is 0 0.19749. Now at this point, what you want to do is you want to work out the th theoretical number of moles of hydrochloric acid. And again, if you've seen my moles video at GCSE, you'll know what I'm talking about. And all that involves you doing is looking at that number you've just calculated, having a look at these big numbers that occur in front of the formulae. And in the case of hydrochloric acid, it's a two. So you double that number to work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So that would be 0 0.34980. However, we don't know for sure that we have that number of moles. That's theoretically the amount of moles we would have based on the amount of magnesium. But we don't know that because we know we've actually got very specific numbers here. We know we've got 7.3 and we know that the MR of hydrochloric acid is 36.45, which means we can do a separate calculation to work out the actual number of moles of hydrochloric acid. And then we're actually going to compare those numbers. So now do 7.3 divided by 36.45, which is 0 0.20027. And in order to solve the question, you now need to compare the actual number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which is this number, with the theoretical moles, which we worked out using the magnesium, which is this number. And you have to look at the numbers and decide which one is lower. So obviously, the actual calculated accurate number here is lower, which means that hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant. So question two, 3.2 grams of copper reacts with 0.4 moles of concentrated nitric acid. 
work out which reagent is in excess and happily here we've been given our balanced symbol equation. Notice that we're looking for the reagent in excess, so the plentiful one as opposed to the limiting one, but don't worry, the maths is still the same. So let's start by doing our table. So we know from the question we have 3.2 grams of copper. In terms of the nitric acid, they've gone in straight away and told us that we have 0 0.4 moles of nitric acid. So that's good, we have less to do here. So looking for the MR of copper using your periodic table, you'll see that it's 63.546. Using our formula triangle, we're going to work out the number of moles of copper by doing 3.2 divided by 63.546. And that gives us a number of moles of 0 0.05035, blah, blah, blah. Now, we need to work out the theoretical number of moles of nitric acid based on this number here. So the way in which we do that is by simply looking at the big numbers in front of the formulae, and we can see that there's a 4 in front of nitric acid, so you actually just need to take that number you've just calculated and multiply it by 4 to get 0 0.201428, blah, blah, blah. And now have a look at these numbers. That is the theoretical number of moles you would need to react completely with all that copper. How much do we actually have? Well, we have 0 0.4, which means we have loads of nitric acid in comparison to copper, which is why nitric acid is in excess. In our final example, we're being asked if 24.77 grams of phosphorus reacts with 100 grams of oxygen and excess water, determine the limiting reagent. So same as before, our table, mass, MR, moles. We've been given the two masses, so phosphorus is 24.77, oxygen is 100 grams. Let's work out the MR of phosphorus. So that's going to be 30.974 times 4 to get 123.896. Our number of moles of oxygen, remember we ignore that big 5, we're just looking for the O2, so we're doing 15.999 times 2 to get 31.998. Our number of moles is mass divided by MR, so let's work that out. So. 24.77 divided by 123.896 equals 0 0.199. And then, like I said before, it doesn't matter what order you do this, but I'm now going to work out the theoretical number of moles of oxygen needed to react with that phosphorus. So all we do is look at the big numbers. There's a 5 in front of the oxygen, so we multiply that number by 5 to get 0 0.999628. However, we now need to work out the number of moles of oxygen based on these numbers. So we're going to do number of moles of oxygen is 100 divided by 31.998 to get 3.125 moles. And at this point, you need to compare the two mole numbers. So in terms of the amount of oxygen you've been given, well, there's loads of it, there's 3.125 moles. In terms of the amount you need to react fully with the phosphorus, where well, you only need 0 0.999628. So clearly, we've supplied way more oxygen compared with phosphorus. So when we determine the limiting reagent, clearly it will be phosphorus.